All right, fans, welcome back to Chaos Corner. It's me, it's me, it's the GOC, coming to you live to tape, 25 feet below the surface of the earth for a special show here at Chaos Headquarters. We are here to preview WrestleMania 39, Nights 1 and Nights 2, Coming from Hollywood, well, let's be honest, Los Angeles, California. Now, fans, I can't thank you for being here enough. This was a spur-of-the-moment uh, podcast, reality show, vlog, whatever you want to call it. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, no paywalls, no super chats. I'm not asking for nothing. I'm here to give you my knowledge. But I got to let you know, the GOC's a little under the weather this shows my passion and dedication for getting the product out to you guys. So let's sit back and relax and enjoy. I will be back. Well, here we are, Friday afternoon. So tonight, uh, Ring of Honor, I know, has their pay-per-view. SmackDown is on tonight, followed by the WWE Hall of Fame. And, of course, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal on SmackDown tonight. So it's a big night tonight on a Friday night. And then, of course, tomorrow, Saturday, not only WrestleMania 1, night 1, you have NXT stand and deliver in the afternoon, which I don't really follow that much. But I know the talent. And then, of course, Sunday's the big one, night 2 of WrestleMania 39. So as I said, I'm a little under the weather, but I am prepared. Uh, I had to bring some of my stuff with me. I have the ibuprofen. I have the Mucinex. For you old schoolers out there, I got the Vicks Vapor Rub that you can rub on like a body deodorant. Of course, the old standby and Afrin. And I am hydrating. So I want you to know I don't have the virus, but uh, uh, I'm feeling okay. And, and you guys make me feel better to come down here and give you the product. So well, I don't even know. What, uh, I'm as confused as a baby at Hooters. It's the medication. I'm not responsible for anything I say or do here on Friday afternoon. I got to stay hydrated. Fans, thanks for being here. We won't be that long. I'm going to run through. I'll probably give a few predictions. Uh, we'll run through night one uh, lineup card, the night two lineup card. We'll discuss a couple of things. Did I say discuss or discuss? Well, you know what Bully Ray said to me back in, I don't know, 05, 06, uh, when it was the uh, Team 3D, uh, the Dudley Boys against Oman Tortuga and Diablo Santiago, the outcast killers with yours truly. We were going for the NWA World Tag Team titles in a series of bouts all over the Northeast. Bully Ray got me back into the locker room. Now, we had some great matches. He said, give the Guardian of Chaos five spots. He'll fuck up for him. I consider that to be a compliment coming from a two-time Hall of Famer. Busted open radio. Perhaps the greatest tag team ever. Maybe next to the Road Warriors. So thank you, Bully Ray. I will never forget that. And I tell that story on every show I do. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, as, as I already repeated, it is Friday. We have some big events tonight. Who knows what's going to come out of SmackDown if maybe the Andre the Giant Battle Royal winner gets into WrestleMania. Uh, we still, for certain talents, on the news and notes productions, uh, LA Knight is not booked yet for WrestleMania 39. Uh, Nick Khan, Pritchard, Vince, Triple H, whoever. You're dropping the ball on that one if it doesn't happen. Also, where is uh, the almighty Bobby Lashley? I understand what, what happened with Bray Wyatt and, and, and all that stuff and Brock and lead to Brock and Omo. So we'll run that over. But no Lashley either. I mean, these are different things that I've noticed going into uh, WrestleMania 39. So uh, a couple other different uh, news and notes. As I said, I will be back on Monday uh, for a full review of, of Nights 1 and Nights 2 of WrestleMania 39. And uh, you guys know, I already said, Ring of Honor has a big pay-per-view tonight. It ought to be a decent show. I'm not going to run through it here because we're here to cover WrestleMania and the WWE, basically. But I'm sure I'll be catching Ring of Honor and Honor card uh, tonight or whatever it's called. There's some big matches. I think they have eight or nine matches. Uh, NXT stand and deliver tomorrow at one o'clock. Now that's going to be a rarity and an oddity in itself. 
So you'll have NXT, if you're a fan of NXT, I'm not huge on the product since years ago, I'll be honest. <coughs> but I am going to say that to say this because I tell it like it is. There are a couple of matches that I'm interested in seeing, and there's some guys that are on that NXT and gals on that NXT roster that don't belong there. They have already belong on the big roster. But the one I am looking forward to for Stand and Deliver, and because of a personal connection and then just of who the other guy is, is the NXT champion, Braun Breaker, son of Rick Steiner. I've been a fan of this guy since he walked into the ring, and he's done nothing but get better. Why he's still on the NXT roster, I don't know. But I'm sure if they were to bring him up, uh, who knows how they would book him in the storylines. And, and let's be honest, they usually screw things up like that, especially over these last bunch of years. I'm just giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Against Carmelo Hayes, who I have a personal connection with because he worked for the group that I work for now that I call my home, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Now, Carmelo Hayes worked on our second show up at the Mohegan Sun Casino, perhaps the biggest casino in North America, when PAPW had a monster event up there and Carmelo Hayes took on JT Dunn. What a match that was. Also, MLW superstar Richard Holiday was on that bout at the Mohegan Sun. So I got to call Carmelo's match and saw Matt Stryker there too and Bull, Demp Bull Dempsey, a.k.a. Bull James, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, what a show at the Mohegan Sun Casino for PAPW. So I got to see Carmelo firsthand. And he wasn't Carmelo Hayes then. And call his match and study him and pick his brain in the locker room as a young talent. And we talked about his match back in the day with Phoenix. And he said, oh, chaos. He said, Big Daddy. He said, you saw that? I said, yeah, of course, brother. You're a talent. Got to remember, he's from the greater uh, tri-state, northeast New England area. And man, he's an unbelievable talent. So I am interested in Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes uh, for the NXT Championship at Stand and Deliver. That's tomorrow. On the cock, if you will, the peacock. Uh, NXT at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. So I wanted to start off with these different news and, and notes. That's what I am interested in for NXT. And like I said, Ring of Honor tonight. I will be tuning in for SmackDown to see what's going to happen for any last-minute things, even though the lineup cards have been uh, updated. But there's seven matches for night one, six for night two of WrestleMania 39. So they'll probably even it out. And if they don't end up using Lashley in LA night, is it dropping the ball maybe? Or is it that I had too much uh, too much Mucinex or, uh, you, you know, what, what, I don't, what, what is it? So those are, those are a couple of things that I am personally miffed by. And listen, I'm not big on, on Battle Royals all the time. But the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, something usually comes out of this. We'll see what happens. It's all fodder. Uh, so I'm hoping and thinking that the winner would somehow find their way into uh, WrestleMania 39. And again, I know the big Monday Night Raw, the Raw after WrestleMania. But I get it. And things come out and the storylines and how they play out. And speaking of storylines, and we'll get on to that. I'm going to try to keep this because of uh, my tender condition here and being a little under the weather. Uh, but I don't feel bad. I'm trying to get, keep this definitely under 45 minutes. I'd like to keep it at a half an hour. You guys can't hold your attention span unless I'm live. And it's no offense. No offense. No, it's a work, baby. It's a joke. Too many offended people out there. Every, I keep saying it in every podcast, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now, you know, for the most part, I'm off those social medias right now. But what a bunch of... You can't talk religion, politics, anything. And they say don't talk that anyway. But everybody out there, instead of having a discussion right away... These certain demographics get mad. What are you getting mad about? Can't you have, let's have a discussion? Let's have a discussion. Everybody wants to have a discussion. But then when you have a discussion and it doesn't go their way, or they don't like what you have to say, or just your opinion, they get mad and come at you because you're giving your opinion. Oh, you don't agree with me. I fuck you. And you're an asshole. Angry emojis. Grow the fuck up, man. It doesn't matter if you're 60 or 40 or 30 or 20. Really? That's why we're in the status that we're in in this in this uh, in this nation in this world. Division amongst everybody it doesn't matter what color, creed, uh, race, culture does it because people just want to get mad and fight and then snap at a moment's notice. Be careful with the tree you bark up. A lot of keeper and warriors. I put a face to the product. I'm just saying. That. I'm just saying, man. All right. I'm just saying. 
So I just wanted to throw that out there. And I love everybody. Keeping the love vibration, man. So let's get on to wrestling. <laughs> We're 10 minutes in here on my opening monologue. Uh, what I do want to talk about next before we get into night one and night two of the cards. And again, I'm just going to uh, give the lineups and give a big prediction or hopefully an accurate prediction. It is sports entertainment. But uh, that's what I'll do for night one and night two. But I want to get into these certain things that I had written down. We know that it's coming from SoFi Stadium in L.A. That's why they keep saying, goes Hollywood. I get it. And boy, what a disappointment that The Rock didn't show up, huh? I mean, I guess he always could. There's always a chance, right? But they had been talking about that for the last two years. This was the one. 39. In Hollywood. And to my knowledge from the people that I know and the people that I follow and listen to and just my own independent critical thinking, which I wish some people would do out there, The Rock only uh, told them and backed out mere weeks ago. Now, you know I listen to JD from Off The Script. I'm a moderator of his. Don Tony, I'm a moderator of his, the OG of podcasts, who's getting back together with Kev Castle. You know, JD and his sidekick on Wednesdays, the Shy town Smart. Uh, uh, Jesse, I'm a, a moderator for him as well. So I'm amongst the best of the best. I listen to the Sala Monster, and I listen to Sean Ross Sapp sometimes, the Wrestling Council, and of course, you know, the professor at Pro Wrestle Zone and Cheap Heat uh, Productions overseas. These guys are the creme de la creme. Okay, in the podcasting world. They're not out there telling stories. They're reporting on the current events. You know, you throw these guys out there and they know what they're talking about. And of course, if you can't see it with your eyes, and me personally, my over 50 years as a scout, an agent, a historian, a, a, just studying the videos, a smark, a mark. Yeah, that's right. And I say it on every podcast and every show. A mark. And I'm proud to say that. In my over three plus decades, 35 years, if you, if you look at it technically, of being a pro wrestling manager, being behind the scenes, being in the business, the industry, uh, from pillar to post and coast to coast and border to border, whether it's sweeping floors, selling tickets, hanging up flowers, uh, flyers. Did I say flowers? Again, I'm, I'm on medication right now. Cut me some slack. I'm a little under the weather, man. I've done it all. Setting up the ring, perform, take the bumps. A lot of you people out there in this that, uh, you know, say things on social media and have shows and stuff like that, none of you <laughs> none of you have ever stepped foot in a fucking ring. You think you know everything. You never took a bump in your life unless it was something illegal. So, you know, I like a lot of the people out there that like to talk shit and attack people. Not necessarily like me. I'm not trying to be negative. Maybe it's the medication. I'm just telling you how I see it. And, you know, when I peruse everybody and, you know, I stay in the back and don't always put my opinion out there. I like to be positive. But if you ain't ever stepped in the ring or trained or try it, then you really don't have a lot to talk about in certain things. You could know what you think you know. And this is... You know who you could be, and certainly not at anybody that I fucking know and respect and love. But you know what I'm talking about when it comes to people that think they know the business or have been in the business or want to be in the business. I think that statement is without beating around the bush, and maybe I am. Maybe I'm not making sense to you guys, but it makes sense that the people out there that are talking all this shit, and I don't care who it is. Uh, you know, between each other. You see my video posts. It's not me. I'm not involved in anything. I don't get involved in any of that. But I just see other people and I don't understand it. A lot of people coming out with stuff. Know what you're talking about. Step in the ring. Get some experience before you say anything. I've been saying this for 40 years. So different notes. So let's get on to some positivity now. Uh, we were talking about Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, NXT stand and deliver tomorrow, Ring of Honor tonight, SmackDown tonight. I even think AEW Rampage is on tonight. What a big night and a Friday night, man. The WWE Hall of Fame. Something that's also on tonight. And I'll get this uploaded this afternoon. Getting the Warrior Award announced just recently, referee Tim White, God rest his soul, the late, great Tim White, who owned a bar right up the road in Rhode Island, uh, you know, and well-documented uh, about his friendship and relationship and being the handler of Andre the Giant, so well-deserved. It would have been nice, you know, passed away in his late 60s. It would have been nice to induct some of these people while they were alive, but I guess that's how they do it. Also going into the Hall of Fame, I never had a chance to meet Tim White. 
we might have been in the same building, but I never met Tim White. Uh, one of my regrets, uh, well, not regrets, but one of the things that, that I wish I would I, I could have had a chance to do. Also going into the Hall of Fame coming up at, uh, this weekend, Rey Mysterio, uh, Lucha Libre star, the ultimate little big guy. What can you say? I'll be here and do a podcast in itself for Rey Mysterio to be junior to be going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Ray Mysterio, I had a chance to work a couple of different events with him, did an autograph signing with him when I was in the independence, he was making a circuit and we did it at a store, got to meet him and talk to him and pick his brain. What an, uh, he was even bigger back then. What an unbelievable guy, a humble guy, a guy that was open and honest. And we were able to sit back and talk for a little bit. So to see Ray Mysterio, one of the greatest little men, one of the greatest grapplers, little or big, one of the greatest luchadors to ever come out of the industry and in this world going into the Hall of Fame, much deserved. Also, and again, the WWE has taken over the, the whole wrestling industry, uh, unless you talk to AEW, at least over the last bunch of years since the territory days. Let's face it, since ECW folded, they bought WCW and AEW wasn't around. So now everyone, people that have never worked for the WWE go into the WWE Hall of Fame or, or if you were just associated. And it's good to see, though, konnichiwa, bitches. It's good to see the great Muda going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Muda was unbelievable in WCW and over in Japan. Truly a legend. Uh, and, and now he, to see him in the independence right before his retirement, he, you know, he came out of... Uh, to, to do some of the appearances here in the States. It's great to see the great Muda going into the WWE Hall of Fame tonight. So Tim White, the Warrior Award, Rey Mysterio, uh, great Muda, and it's just been announced also. And for whatever reason, I don't judge anybody or disrespect anybody. You'll find that out about me. And I keep saying it in all these podcasts throughout the years I've been on here and those who know me, Stacey Keebler's going into the Hall of Fame. It's not for me to say deserve, well-deserved. You give your opinion and that's it. I don't know if she's deserving, but she made it. She'd get there. So give her her, as people say, flowers. I don't like that saying, but give her to her. Stacey Keebler's going into the Hall of Fame. So that that's the Hall of Fame class. A little short. They usually have six, seven folks. Am I right? You know I've been in the ring with over 30 WWE Hall of Famers myself. Not to mention other guys from TNA and Hall of Fame and other Hall of Famers. Just to make the personal connection, as I said here on Chaos Corner, which you don't get on some of these other shows. That's what you get here with Big Daddy. Right, I just refer to myself in third term? Ah, I thought you hate when people do that, man. Uh, so that's that's tonight. WWE Hall of Fame. SmackDown. Rampage. Ring of Honor. Supercard. <coughs> but you know what? Excuse me. A few omissions from the WWE Hall of Fame. What about from the Samoan Dynasty? Hasn't he earned it? You know, if you look at the other criterion people have been in the Hall of Fame. Umaga. You know, my connection and personal history there with the Samoan Dians, Di a Dynasty and working with Omaga. I'm not, not going to get into all that. Shouldn't he be in the Hall of Fame? Sid Vicious? Sid Justice? Batista? I mean, and th there's several more. But those are the ones that just bounce right off the pages at me that if you're going to be putting in, uh, you know, other folks and nothing against Kaufman, uh, who's going into the Hall of Fame, the legendary comedian, Taxi, Latka, uh, you know, Bre Breakfast with Blassie, uh, Memphis, Memphis and Mid-South majority King Lawler, uh, uh, intergender champion, I almost said the word that people will flip out on, intergender champion, uh, 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 and David Letterman bitch slapped by uh, uh, Lawler on Letterman, that was, those were the days, Andy Kaufman, uh, Tony Clifton. <laughs> so that that that's something else, ain't it, right? And so, you know, these guys deserve to go in. There's many others. <coughs> Thanks for being here. Alexa, higher the volume. It'll be a little more soothing than my congestion and proboscis congestion and chest and cough and sneeze. Alexa, higher the volume, please. I even have to say please to Alexa. I got to be quiet now. So that's that's what we got going on uh, thus far. News and notes that I wanted to give to you. Also, different things that I picked up from other people that helped me out as well. I guess we can get into the card. I did. There was uh, some other notes that I wanted to bring down. I'm not sure if I'm from the executive boardroom. I, I didn't bring them down. But I also did hear. 
<coughs> off the top of my head. Usually for a Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, whenever they're live on the road, WWE has usually, I don't know, six, seven, eight tractor trailers full of equipment, so on and so forth, that, you know, they bring to the venue depending on the town, the talent, and what's going on and how they're setting it up. That's that's a lot, seven or eight tractor trailers. You know, they've gone, really gone Hollywood. I'm hearing that this year you can just about double that or more. They're going to have like 24 to 30 18-wheelers they have out there in Hollywood for all the equipment to travel across from Titan Towers in Connecticut and whoever else where they rented and leased out there in, in, in Cali. Unbelievable how big this is going to be. And I also read news and notes and saw online I don't know. This is just a guesstimate where I, I'm assuming every Monday and Friday or their live shows, they approximately spend by knowing guys in the business and people that I've talked to and just being there live in the past, which the money's different now. And then reading what I saw in the last couple of days, I don't know, two to, I don't know, a hundred, two hundred thousand, maybe a night for the pyro, the flames, everything, the lights, the graphics, just an approximate. Don't anybody hold me. Leave a comment if you know something more than I do. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, get us in the algorithm. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and again, from the bottom of my heart, I'm a little little ornery because I'm I'm being sick, uh, a little under the weather, but I'm positive. You guys know that. And I appreciate everyone being here. So if it's 100,000, 200,000 for Pyro on a normal show, I'm hearing it's a half a million or better coming up for WrestleMania 39, night one and two. And just the pyro that and the money that's being invested for WrestleMania 39. And again, that's why I say the disappointment of The Rock. The Rock says, come on, man. You see him behind me, right? I got to appear in an event and meet him and pick his brain and work the same event and appearance that he did back in, what does it say on here? At the Bally's main gym in Brooklyn. I don't know. I think that was 2004. And I was there with the AWA superstars of wrestling and The Rock. Oh, the GOC, that's why you come here. But anyway, I'm hearing it's about 500 plus K coming up for all the pyro. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, all the pyrotechnics and graphics and what you're going to see. Which is to expect. It's WrestleMania. <coughs> it's the Super Bowl <coughs> of pro wrestling. It is. So those are the different news and notes that I heard about different things. Now, you know, everyone's talking about Vince, 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 Vince. Everybody's talking about Vince. Guys, I told you, he never left. And if he did, it was undercover. He's been lurking. He's going to be there in Gorilla. He's going to have the headsets on. You know he's been responsible for some of these matches. No matter what you say, all you guys out there, you fall into this every time. It'll be true when Vince passes away, God forbid. Because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. And that's a shoot. So, you know, everyone talks a lot about Nick Khan, too. Say what you want about Nick Khan. Maybe he's in it for himself. He's a savvy son of a bitch, Nick Khan. He's playing and wheeling, dealing, whether it's for Vince himself, the McMahons, whatever he's doing, it's working. Look at the money. Look at the revenue. I'm not saying in the storyline or the product. It's still the place to be. It's still the mothership. Come on, let's be honest. AEW's doing their thing. I'm an AEW fan. I'm a Ring of Honor fan. I'm a New Japan fan. The MLW, the NWA, Impact. I watch it all. Of course, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. If there isn't anything that I don't watch. I'm a, a fan of the business. You guys get that, right? The storytelling. It's, you know, the, the longest episodical TV ever. You guys get it, right? So with all that being said, Say what you want, whether Vince came back, they're going to sell it to the Saudis, they're going to do this, that. Uh, there's different people that are interested in it in here, Comcast, I don't know. Nick Khan, Vince McMahon haven't been doing this, especially Vince and Nick, where he came from, because they're dumb. Yeah, they got people helping them out, people on their team. But just, just remember that when you guys come into this, that it's a work, man. It's a work. Okay, so here we go. I got night one. Just want to make sure. I talked about the Hall of Fame, NXT, Ring of Honor. Uh, uh, what's coming on tonight? I told you I'll be back Monday for a full preview. I mean, review of night one and night two. So uh, here we go. I'll, I'll just run it down. We're 25 minutes in. 
So we'll definitely, this will definitely be less than 45 minutes. Boom, and I'll put it up and you'll get it uh, Friday evening, maybe in time for dinner. All right, going into SmackDown, into the Hall of Fame, uh, into AEW Rampage, uh, the Ring of Honor Supercard pay-per-view, into tomorrow NXT Stand and Deliver, night one of WrestleMania 39, and then leads you in to get a little rest, and then Sunday... Night two of WrestleMania 39. I hope I make it all through. And then after all that is said and done, it's right back to Monday Night Raw, man. I'm just saying. Night one, SoFi Stadium, Los Angeles, California. Hollywood, California. It's Saturday, obviously, tomorrow night. WrestleMania 39. Here's the preview. And this is in no particular order. Here's the match card for WrestleMania 39. April 1st, tomorrow's April Fool's, April 1st, 2023, and then April 2nd, 2023, a lot happening out there in the world, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, do your due diligence and be right, make sure that you're right, just telling you, here we go, and this is officially Opening up WrestleMania 39, night one, WrestleMania in general, 39. It's going to be the legendary Bang Baby, and we'll get into the story, John Cena to return against Austin Theory, the United States champion. This is opening up WrestleMania 39. Now, you know the whole story of Austin Theory trying to grow the beard. He looks kind of funny. The guy's in tremendous shape. Listen, when he was doing his whole stick and shtick, even before that with Vince McMahon and talking in the office and to the different objects and Vince looking the way he was and they were talking to each other and all that. I mean, you get it. And, you know, it was a kind of a joke with Theory and he was losing and the money in the bank winner. And look where Theory is now. And you saw, and a lot of people said, I'm, I'm not the brainchild of this. Austin Theory was there from the beginning physically. The way he put it together, he wasn't booked the right way. Look at him now. But you knew Vince putting him in the limelight from the rip this guy was going to be a star. And here it is all this time later. And he's, he's the U.S. champion opening up against a legendary who will be a Hall of Famer, John Cena. Perhaps one of the biggest talents ever to step into the squared circle in the WWE, along with guys like The Rock and, and Stone Cold and, and Hulk Hogan and, and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Macho Man. Just let that sink in. Let that sink in. So Cena carried the company for 10 years. I worked with John Cena in 03, 04. Uh, had a, a chance to be his security, a.k.a. walk him to back and forth, get a chance to sit with him and rap and talk and, and meet people on the back and make sure no one got to him. We didn't work together in the ring, but outside of the ring was more important. And uh, just listen, watching in him and learning by watching and listening the way he interacted with fans and their family. And he was a young guy back then. And we were in New Jersey and Connecticut and Rhode Island, uh, different places, New York. And to, wear, to see him, especially at the convention centers, interact with people. And then in the, afterwards, outside in the parking lot, taking the phone of a kid in the crowd. And, you know, everybody's standing around like a rap battle and do it back then when he was thug John Cena. Before, you know, you knew he was going to be the star. You knew he was going to be the man. Could you have predicted where he went? No. But you saw it then, man. And it was, it was great and, and humble and blessing to be a part of that, be able to talk to him as a young man to see where he is now. I always enjoy that part. So Cena versus Theory. This is almost Cena looking at himself, you know, 15 years ago, right? 20 years ago. Uh, you know, Cena's vast history and past. And whenever they want to bring somebody back to sob or put asses in the seats, whether it be Stone Cold, who's rumored to be around maybe on night two. We'll get into that. <coughs> What he did with Kevin Owens last year was tremendous. Let that marinate for a second. Stone Cold at WrestleMania 39. Let that marinate. Uh, so Cena in theory for the U.S. title. Hey, listen, John has done this many, many times. He's What does he do best besides win and carry the company? Holla like Roman Reigns is doing right now. Cena makes other people look good too. And I'm sure he's willing to hand it off. You can predict Austin Theory beats John's uh, uh, Cena tonight. Okay, hustle, loyalty, respect. I'm about it. Uh, uh, you know, Cena for life. But I don't see Austin Theory losing the title tonight because I just don't think John would want that or would let that happen. I don't think Cena would want that or let that happen. 
So I'm going with Austin Theory to open up for the U.S. title. He's going to retain it. My prediction. Hey, listen, if it doesn't age, it doesn't wait age. I'm no different than anybody else. It's just the personal connection. So it's all conjecture. It's sports entertainment, man. They're talking about betting on this shit. Don't get crazy, man. Thanks for being here. Oh, hold on. Don't go anywhere. Will you please? Night shift. For a better morning, although it's not night. The old Mucinex. I, I swear by it. It works, man. It knocks things out. And yes, for all you people that are going to bitch why I tested negative. It's a man, it, 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 you still... You guys are still walking around with that? Come on. Wake up. Cena and Theory. I'm going with Theory. Charlotte Flair, the SmackDown champion, and Rhea Ripley. Mommy. Big Mommy. Mamacita for Dominic Mysterio. Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair. This match happened a few years back, did it not? Charlotte Flair beat Rhea Ripley. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. I'd like to see Rhea Ripley beat Flair. But Charlotte Flair is one of the best female grapplers ever. Say what you want about her. Sharba, she's selfish. She doesn't put anybody over. She's difficult to work with. I never worked with her. So I don't, I don't know that about Charlotte. But I can tell you this. I know she's an unbelievable talent. I know as far as grappling and wrestling goes and maneuvers, perhaps the best in the world. Rhea Ripley has come a long way. I think the WWE blew it with her back then when she should have should have beaten Charlotte back then uh, for the title. She was a, a, a stud in NXT, if I could say that, about Rhea Ripley. I'm not saying I'm looking forward to the match. It's two of the better women grapplers in the division. I think Charlotte retains the title against Rhea Ripley. We were talking about selfish, right? I don't think Charlotte is going to Charlotte is going to put over Rhea uh, Ripley. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't think it. I think it would be an entertaining match. Uh, I'm going to stick with Charlotte Flair. Another match. A big, big, big match. Perhaps the match of the night. Maybe the match of the weekend. And a storyline that's been going on for a year or two. Right? It's for the WWE or the and Raw, SmackDown, whatever you want to call it. The un, uh, unified, unanimous undisputed, whatever you want to call it, tag team championships, Jimmy and Jay Uso against Sami Zayn and KO Kevin Owens. You know the story. I'll be here for two hours if we go on with this story. The bloodline, Sami, Kevin Owens, their connection back to the independence, Rikishi's sons, Jimmy and Jay, their whole connection with the bloodline and Sami Us and are you feeling Usy, baby? Roman Reigns, the uh, the head of the table, the tribal chief. We know all that storyline. It's been going on. That's been one of the few things that has kept me into the WWE. Let's be honest, since since like 2019. I'm just saying it like it is even a little before that. I mean, I'm just telling it like it is. I'm not a, a, the killer in the viewing. I go back. I look through what I want to look. I look for people I want to watch. I update. I listen to many, many stars, many, many people that know what they're talking about. You understand what I'm saying. This is going to be a hell of a match. The longest reigning tag team champions in quite some time, the Usos, right? Am I correct about that? The longest ever? Well, I don't know. Current day, any, anyway, modern day? The Usos against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I'm, I'm taking the Usos. Jimmy and Jay are going to retain the titles. Hey, listen, would I be shocked if Sami and KO went over? The crowd will go fucking insane in LA. Although the Samoans are from out that way too. The crowd will go crazy if Sammy and KO win. I don't know how they're booking and writing it. That's why I did do a prediction, a preview. It's almost fun because how fucked up the writing is from the staff over there. And in wrestling nowadays anyway, for as easy as it is, and you can watch every show in AEW and predict the winner, the WWE is all over the place. It's so it's enter it is sports entertainment, and they want to bet on this shit, man. I'm going with the Usos. Uh, another match, uh, a three-way female match. Becky Lynch, the man. Lita and Trish Stratus, two legends of the business, against Damage Control, Bailey EO Sky and Dakota Kai. Say that three times fast. Bailey EO Sky and Dakota Kai. 
damage control against Becky, Lita, and Trish. No way in hell Lita, Trish, and Becky lose this match. First off, I'm sure Vince threw it together and brought back Trish. Uh, come on. I'm sure he threw it together. You think two legends, two Hall of Famers, and the man are going to lose the damage control? I don't see it. This just giving you. I'm not delving deep into every match. I'm running it over here to push out the content for you guys on the channel. I'll go with Becky, Lita, and Trish over damage control. Seth freaking Rollins and Logan Paul. I'm looking forward to this match. Logan Paul's wrestled, what, a half dozen times? He's made well of himself. Say what you want about Logan Paul. The guy's an athlete. The kid knows what it's about. He gets it. He wouldn't be who he is or his brother without knowing what the hell they're doing, having good management, business model, and putting the time and ass in it. Let's face it, Logan Paul's the real deal. <coughs> I don't care what any of you guys say. And I know a lot of you agree with me. So it's not attacking you, my fans. Again, Seth freaking Rollins, who's been a steady in the business. I don't like his game. Seth freaking Rollins and the dancing and the choking and the dancing around. What the fuck is that? But he's a good worker. He's a good, good in the ring. He's a solid hand. He's one of the best in the WWE. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Seth Rollins go over. But I'm picking Logan Paul. It wouldn't surprise me to see Seth Rollins win. He's a solid worker, a superstar. Got nothing against Seth Rollins. Don't like the gimmick, but Seth as himself. Let's put in, uh, in perspective here uh, the shield. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. Ambrose is Moxley. Rollins is still Rollins. Roman went on to be who he is. Who's next? Moxley, Ambrose, or Seth freaking Rollins? I'll leave that up to you. I like Seth Rollins. Don't like the gimmick, but he's he's a good worker. He's in great shape. I'm taking Logan Paul. Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. No me joda maricón, muévete culo. Let me, let me not get crazy here, Mendejo. Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. Imagine if they were in Mexico City, if this was in Mexico or Lucha Libre. They'd still probably draw as many fans. Will something happen tonight at SmackDown? Will they do the storyline? I don't advise it, but could you imagine if Ray and Mommy show up tonight and interrupt it to roll into the bigger storyline for, for uh, tomorrow night? I hope they don't do that. Dominic and Ray Mysterio. Will Rhea be with Dominic? No. She's got a match tomorrow night with Charlotte Flair for the title. So I would think not. This is straight up one-on-one. -on -one. Of course not. Does Ray? Do they push these, a lot of these storylines, will they go further? You know, most of them will go somewhere. Some of them won't. The Becky Lee, the Trish, Damage Control, I don't know where they're going to go with that. The, we know Uso, Sammy, and KO will continue. Charlotte and Rhea Ripley, where's the storyline there? Cena and Theory, where's the storyline there? Uh, Ray and Dominic got a good storyline, but where are we going to go from here? The next one, uh, Braun Strowman, Ricochet versus uh, the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders and the Men's Showcase. I should have started off first with this, but then you guys wouldn't be here. I mean, no, no storyline there. Minimal in between the teams. So Ray and Dominic is the storyline. The Usos and Sammy and Kevin is the storyline. I mean, I know Damage Control been doing... There's not a big storyline there. Come on, we'll, a couple weeks. Seth Rollins and Logan Paul, okay. Not a long storyline. Just giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Will Ray lose to Dominic? Anybody else going to be involved? I'm going Ray Mysterio. Again, I'm not bad. Don't go out and bet on these picks. And again, I told you about the men's showcase match. Strowman, Ricochet, the Street Profits, Alpha Academy, and Viking Raiders. You know what? <clears throat> Solid teams. Viking Raiders, they've changed their gimmick up, but they work together as a team. Alpha Academy, hey, listen, whether he be Shorty G. Gable or, or Big Otis or, or Heavy Machinery, they work, they work well together. The Street Profits, unbelievable athletes, can fly out of the building. Braun Strowman to Ricochet, you get a mixture there. Ricochet's an incredible athlete. Braun Strowman, the big man, not always booked the right way, not a great grappler. I'm going to go with the uh, Street Profits in this one. But I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't see the Viking Raiders winning. I don't. I, to tell you the truth, 
Strawman and Ricochet was probably who most people will go with. But I'm going to listen. I wouldn't be surprised if the Street Profits won. Let me throw in a, an upset. Alpha Academy. Somehow, some way. See how this ages. All right, night two. Here we go, fans. Wow, longer than I thought. We might go an hour. Sunday night, night two, WrestleMania 39. The big one. From Hollywood, California. We already said from SoFi Stadium in L.A. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. What do you say, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes? Not a long storyline. Cody was out for a long time. Roman was coming up close. They wanted to be nice to see him get to a thousand days. What everyone's talking about. Cody's been doing nothing but talking about Dusty. Love Dusty. You know my personal connection there. We won't get into it. We'll be here for fucking two hours. Cody looks great. Really represented himself since he left AEW. No fucking way Cody beats Roman Reigns tonight. I know a lot of people expect that. A lot of people want it. I don't see it. I think Roman retains the belt. Doesn't lose it yet. He gets to the, the, the benchmark of a thousand days. Roman Reigns retains the title. Sunday night at WrestleMania 39 over Cody Rhodes. My opinion. Bianca Belair, the Raw Women's Champion and Asuka. No storyline here either. Love Asuka. They've screwed her over and haven't run her the right way. Since maybe NXT or when she first came in. Just, just give an opinion and flash her back. No storyline here. Bianca's an, Bianca's an amazing uh, uh, athlete. We all know that. Her, her background, unbelievable. No way Asuka wins. I would consider that a huge upset. Bianca Belair. There's no storyline here. They threw it together. Uh, I, I don't see Bianca losing to Asuka. Gunther. Walter. Gunther. Walter. Walter. Gunther. Gunther Walter versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. This will be a banger, as the kids say. I'm looking forward to this one. Talk about meat. Talk about stiff. Talk about snug. Talk about working hard. Talk about future talent. And, and yeah, okay, some of them weren't used the right way and got fucked over. But that's the business. Gunther versus McIntyre versus Sheamus for the Intercontinental title, a, a three-way, a triple threat. I'm looking forward to this match. And I'm going to say it right here. Sheamus, great worker, big dude, physical. Certainly would love to have him at my back in a fucking barroom brawl. Well-deserving. Drew McIntyre, we know he's an unbelievable physical specimen. He was a champ during the COVID era, so he kind of got screwed over. Had unbelievable matches at, at, at the castle over there uh, uh, across the pond when they had the pay-per-view. But to me, Gunther, Walter, Walter, Gunther. If he loses, you're making a big mistake. This man is tremendous and has transformed into a beast. Imperium, Gunther, it doesn't matter. I'll take Gunther for the IC title. I'm a big fan of Gunther. Hey, listen, I like McIntyre. I'm a big fan of Sheamus. I like their style. I like their size. That's what a professional wrestler looks like and is supposed to work like. Are guys like that. Roman Reigns, Gunther, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Brock Lesnar. Those are men's men. Those, 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 those are wrestling. Bobby Lashley. You know, throw in L.A. Knight. We'll go, you know, throw in your John Cena's. Those are guys that are workers. Seth Rollins. I'm just, I'm going off on a tangent here. Gunther retains the IC title. Edge versus the demon Finn Balor in Hell in a Cell. Well, I'm not crazy about Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania, but I guess it's a stack card in night two. It really is. You can't go wrong on night one or night two. Edge versus the Demon Finn Balor. Hell in a Cell, you know the storyline. They've been going back and forth. We know the, uh, the uh, Edge wife's been involved. Gangrel is rumored to be maybe uh, in the corner or somewhere lurking about with Edge. Just rumors, speculation, innuendo. Edge versus Finn Balor. Hell in a Cell. It's not really for anything. To settle a feud. I'm going to go with Edge. That's my pick at Chaos Corner. Thanks for being here. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you stayed all the way along. I know it's a long episode, but I'm covering two nights in less than an hour. In a Hall of Fame. Cut me some slack. Here's one I am interested in. I don't care who called it. You know Vince booked it. Vince, you can see Vince handwriting on, on several of these matches if you're paying attention. You can see where Triple H may, it may be in there too. You, you can see the influence if you know the product and if you follow the people that I follow and listen to. Brock Lesnar against the Almighty. No, no, not the Almighty. 
almost the near seven footer. Now listen, almost is a big dude, a big man. Uh, you know, just like Satnam Singh in AEW. Too bad he can't work a little harder. Uh, I, I like Omos. Uh, he's he, he's not what I really want to see. He's not going to be near the top, but he's a big dude. You, can, you, know, you can't teach size. Brock Lesnar is just a beast or an animal. I've been a Brock Lesnar fan since day one. So I'll, this, whatever's behind it, Brock didn't want to work with Wyatt. Uh, Brock does what Vince tells him. Uh, if, Vince does what Brock tells him. Either way, Brock Lesnar wins this match over almost. Six-way match uh, to wrap it up here on uh, Chaos Corner. Preview of WrestleMania 39, night one and night two. We're on night two. Alive to tape, but from the bunker. Under the weather, but doing okay. Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez versus Natalia and Shotzi versus Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green in the Women's WrestleMania Showcase match. Again, I did this in reverse order because I want to keep your attention. Otherwise, you would have shut off a long time ago. And maybe it did after I did WrestleMania night one. Uh, preview. Well, I don't know. We're wrapping it up here. We're on 46 minutes. <laughs> Losing my voice. My nasals. But I'm dead. <coughs> but I'm doing all right, man. Now, this is the Women's Wrestling Showcase. Let's break it down. Natalia and Shotzi. <laughs> Rousey Baszler. I would like to see win, but I think it's going to go to Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. Now, listen, everyone, Sonya Deville's recent uh, run-in with the law and a weapon and all that. And everyone's touching on that, too. Let me not say anything. So Sonya and Chelsea Green, I don't see them winning. I definitely don't see Natalia and Shotzi, Natalia Neidhart. I think it comes down to Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, who are hot and big right now in the scene, in the big show, against Rousey and Baszler. I'm going to take Rousey and Baszler. Although I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, as Morgan and Rodriguez. Those are the breakdowns. Again, we don't know what's going to happen, if there's going to be another match or two added. I'm here Stone Cold. Uh, I hear L.A. Knight. Bobby Lashley. I mean, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal winner. Uh, who knows? You know, will Gangrel be with Edge? I mean, I'm sure he's not going to get involved, but there's the gist. There's what we have going on for WrestleMania 39 broken up into two nights, night one and night two, here in less than an hour in Chaos Corner, sitting back, relaxing again, a little under the weather, but I'm feeling okay, everybody's doing okay, so I send my thoughts and prayers and well wishes and positivity and light, uh, and good vibrations out to everybody out there in the IWC, because it's me, it's me, it's the GOC, again, leave a comment, a like, a subscribe, a remark, even if you dislike, let's talk pro wrestling. I'll say that to say this. Don't you dare miss it.